Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I have some watering to do and I thought I'd just bring you guys along because I feel like I've never actually really showed my entire like plant care routine and I honestly would say like this is the closest thing I have to a routine when it comes to my plant care or just like my plant hobby in general I guess. I also want this to be as realistic as, realistic as possible because um, this is actually what I do whenever I care for my plants. Like I will literally come sit on my ground, sit on my ground, sit on my floor, um, and just literally take out all of these plants, see how they're doing, see what needs water. And I will usually have like some sort of planty video on, like I know Green Sheen posted today. Um, for you guys, I guess maybe you'd be watching this, but I usually tend to like watch Unplant Parenthood, Green Sheen, Wild Fern. It is very relaxing and just like, Honestly, you know what? We'll get into it. I don't want to I don't want to make this intro too long, but yeah, let me set you guys up and then we'll get right into it. I do want to talk really quickly about the myco thing. Myco does best when you aren't fertilizing it. So like it's best to inoculate when you aren't fertilizing so that the plants have sort of a reason to um make the like symbiotic relationship with the myco and so i've stopped putting it in with my fertilizer water and recently i actually did get a um ph testing kit so that i can sort of figure out you know my ph and you guys my like tap water is so it's either really really basic or really i'm pretty sure it's basic basic is like lower on the spectrum and then acidic is like um further down i think or I could be flipping it around. Either way, it's at a four, which is like the worst pH ever for plants. I wouldn't say it's the worst. I feel like it'd be a little bit more, um, it'd be a little bit worse if it was higher. Like, I f at least I feel that way. I feel like that's when you sort of get into a uh, nutrient lockout. I feel like that's sort of when you'd see that. I don't know. And like to think that before I would literally just water my plants with um, tap water, like a no fertilizer, no nothing. So there wasn't really anything shifting the tap water, I would say. Just kind of literally, oh my god, this thing is shedding like crazy. It's just literally really basic water. And I'm happy that I got the pH tester because I feel like before I was kind of like, oh, I don't need to test my pH, like what, what's the point? But as I've gotten more into the... Um, more a little bit more into my watering and my fertilizing i feel like it's definitely become a lot more important a lot more oh right i forget this as a whole a lot more important to sort of test my ph you guys this orchid i don't think is doing too well it's really hard to tell but there's like such a small um gap i'm pretty sure this is where it got rotted and i already like gave it a hydrogen peroxide bath all of that I've just been leaving it in here, hoping that it'll root up. I had it in perlite for a while. It, it just, it rotted in there. I don't know what the heck. <sighs> I'm really gonna, honestly, I'm really gonna be upset with myself if I lose this orchid. And um, I'm trying, but it's definitely not going too great. And it was a gift, so it's, it's, um... Yeah, it's, it's a whole situation. There's actually a, like, dedicated orchid shop near me. I think her her shop name is, like, Little Orchid Anne. Annie or something like that. I'll put it in the screen, if anything. I'm thinking about going and, like, asking her what I should do to sort of get this to be successful. Um, because I feel like, literally, it's mostly orchids. So I feel like it'd be a good idea to go to someone who knows orchids this is a luxuriance cross from Rousseau and it is in water now because of um rotting yeah it did rot I think what happened with this is uh because I, re I repotted it the day after the day of that I got it I think and I like just put it back into you know, a substrate that was a little bit more chunky. I got off all of the um, rotted roots. And then I think what happened was I put in, like I potted up roots that were already really waterlogged and then they just continued to rot in that. So the one thing that I would say with this is like really pay attention to the color of your roots because when roots are like gray or they look like they've absorbed a lot of water, usually means that they're not gonna do that great. 
um, it usually means that they're on their way to rotting so if you ever see anything like that I definitely recommend to cut it off oh yeah also this plant I always forget the name of this but I think it's a areth arthrostema arthrostema something I actually chopped it back and I chopped it back because I didn't really enjoy the roots on this and I felt like it was kind of rotting I don't know what was going on with it but I just was not I didn't enjoy the roots and so I wanted to sort of get some better roots on it and hopefully we're on our way to do that I don't see anything sprouting yet but they're still like they still feel pretty firm and maybe I'll stick them in my little Ikea greenhouse situation by the way you guys this is literally what I do when I'm repotting so like I'm I'm just like going through every single plant seeing how they're doing um also in my last video I found this really funny like I hope no one takes offense to this but it was funny to me that no one even mentioned my haircut <laughs> like not that you like needed to but it was just funny I thought that that was gonna be like the one thing that everyone mentioned and no one really said anything but yeah I did get a haircut a couple weeks ago now honestly and it's taken me a while to kind of get used to it I still honestly hold on oh my god this plant is stressing me out because it has a new leaf this is my politoforum oh my god I love this plant so much so so much um what was I saying oh right um yeah I got this haircut a couple weeks ago and I feel myself I feel like I'm sort of starting to regret it a little bit I wouldn't say like complete regret but it's definitely like I feel like because the cold is starting to settle in the cold is starting to come and I just I'm gonna miss having that warmth around my head and <laughs> also I feel like long hair is just a lot easier to style compared to short hair like if I wake up and, have, and I have a bad hair day with short hair what am I supposed to do like now I can put it in a ponytail but there was like a couple weeks I think that was like the first week I had it that I wasn't able to put it in a ponytail um and by the way I feel like my hair is growing ridiculously fast like um I feel like it was a lot shorter than this and now I can actually like tie it back in a hair in like a ponytail and stuff and I can even braid it which is like crazy I don't know so far none of these plants need watering so I think I'm pretty good. I water, I did water my politiflorum yesterday, but that was because it was like dry. Like it was really, really dry. So I didn't want to wait, especially since it has a new leaf. You do not want to let anthuriums dry out when they have a new leaf um, because they will, they're not forgiving in that sense. Also, I just love to check on my like little springtail farm in here. <laughs> I don't know why it's like so like, it's not gross to me. It's just weird. That I have like so many freaking springtails in here and you guys this thing grows so quickly like I don't know if I ever showed the stem like when it was like first when I first got it I guess it was so thin it was like a little twig and now it's definitely a lot thicker and it's like actually turning into a tree now which is just crazy this thing grows so quickly I've also tried to propagate this multiple times and I've given it to, I gave one to my brother and I gave one to my, one of my close friends that's also into plants. And both of them, for some reason, just did not do well. I don't know what it is. So I do want to take some propagations of this, but I think I might wait till the summer. Because, I mean, it, one of them did take a while to root and then the other was like still pretty, I don't know. I feel like these just don't really do well. Maybe if I like, um, maybe in the summer if I like tried to like, oof I don't know actually I was gonna say in the summer if I like tried to propagate them outdoors maybe it would do a little bit better because I know this is a bonsai tree and it it's from Brazil as well so maybe if I like put them into some like straight peat moss um and then like have like a humidity dome or something over them outside I do have an east facing like my thing faces east and south is this way so it would still get some pretty good light you know from the south side of like where the sun is i guess in the summer is what i'm like talking about but yeah i don't know i just don't really know how to like get this to be successful because like this on its own is doing amazing it roots up really really well but then like when i go to propagate it i just don't know 
um it is a really really cool plant and i love like i would love to share this but i just need to figure out how to get these propagations to be a little bit more resilient okay also my jose bono actually has a new leaf on the way which is really really nice um i'm sorry i feel like my mic is not gonna pick this up because i keep turning this way so maybe i should have put my mic somewhere over here i don't know this does have a little bit of rotting. I think I'm just going to switch out the water. And I do this a lot with my propagations. I'll literally just dump this water into this cup and then pour it back in because this also has some like water in it currently. Just to kind of get some fresh water in there. But yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the pH testing as well. I feel like pH testing is really, really fun. If you are like one of those people that like feels like you don't really need pH testing or like you don't really want to pH test, I get it. I was definitely one of those people for a long time, but I will say having the pH tester on hand definitely gives me a little bit more peace of mind. I feel like like I've been wanting to uh, foliar feed for a while, which maybe I'll actually try and do that today, but I've kind of stopped myself a little bit because I didn't have a pH tester and I was like, I don't want to foliar feed and have the wrong ph and you know just it not be a really good like it could easily go bad at that point um because i'm going to be spraying water on the leaves that isn't going to be ready readily available to the uh plants also by the way i did already ph test this this is um my like tap water with the general hydroponic general hydroponics flora grow series like the three-part series um and this actually the fertilizers tend to bring up my ph so it's at about a five or six if i remember and you want your plants ph to be at 5.5 to 6.5 in that sort of range and that's when you're like golden so i feel like this is like the perfect ph i did notice that when i added um myco it i it i can't remember if it either up to my ph or down to my ph i need to take some pictures maybe i'll do that later today or tomorrow is um actually go and like thoroughly test my ph because i still i still have a lot of things that i want to test like i i want to follow your feed with calmag for now um until i can get my hands on russo's kelp feed um and so i want to test my like calmag um with just like my tap water i want to test and see how that uh tests on the ph meter um honestly it's really fun i feel it makes it feel more sciencey and like you feel like you're actually like i don't know i don't know if that makes sense but it definitely feels a lot it feels really cool to like ph test i don't know i feel like a scientist or something i've been thinking about throwing out this freaking white wizard so many times you guys so many freaking times and okay there we go it barely has like one tiny little root you know what i think i'm probably gonna take this and stick this with my um oops, sorry about that i'm probably gonna take it and stick it in with my gigas because i've heard people that, that struggle to root up gigas and gigas like my gigas has not had any issues whatsoever and i think it's just because of the humidity um i know that gigas don't mind humidity like i don't think any plant really minds humidity um as long as it's not too much obviously and if it has airflow which in in my cloche i don't even really have airflow i do obviously I air it out like once a week whenever i'm watering oh that's another thing i wanted to talk about but i'll get to that in a second yeah actually i think i'm going to stick this in with my gigas with my gigas maybe it'll do a little bit better in there um and yeah i also need to refill this you guys i really need to pot these up but i don't have um that is disgusting i don't have a container for them that i like would feel comfortable like potting them in um Of course that happens oh my god why do i even one of the leaves fell off of my one leaf cutting of my uh variegated heteracium and so there's just a node left yeah so i only do this whenever i have time 
um, which lately has been on like Wednesdays and Fridays or just whenever I sort of need a moment to myself. Um, I will do this like I will just sit down and like fully immerse myself in my plant care um, and trust me this takes me like as long as I want it to if there's something that needs to be done I will do it in this moment and it's not like I feel forced to like do this it's sort of just like I want to do this because honestly this just makes me feel really good about my plant care when I sit down and do this it honestly feels like a little bit like therapy just because I feel like I'm kind of just like doing what I enjoy for like however much time I want to um and it's not like again it's not forceful it's not like I'm doing this because I'm like the plants are dying or like they need me right now um oh my god I gotta stop doing that Jesus I keep tipping water out of this freaking cup I keep forgetting it has a hole you guys should like see what you're on right now it's kind of like crazy but um for the most part like this is literally what i enjoy doing i look forward to this every time like every week i would say just because of how like tranquil i feel and i feel like i just have the time and ability to like um appreciate my plants really like look at them see how they're doing um see if they need see if they need water and just like really really enjoy them i guess by the way my friend gave me this begonia listata the lighting is like horrible right now but it is just so beautiful you guys like so freaking beautiful i love the, there we go so freaking beautiful and i love it I, I really do love it um begonia listata reminds me so much of my old job just because we had like three or four pots of them that just like were always there they wouldn't really sell and the last time I went into my old job I saw that one of the big ones sold and I was like oh my god this thing is still flowering this is the Sinbad trust me I wasn't a begonia girl but I'm like being converted trust me <laughs> they're just like really cool plants and um I feel like after my experience with my work I used to work at a plant store if you didn't know um after that experience I've kind of just appreciated them a little bit more and yeah I, I really do love begonias I think my friend being a begonia head really helps with that too because she kind of gets me um into them as well like she'll give me some of her begonias and stuff and um yeah I really do love them and they're really really pretty and oh my god I need to put more distilled water in here this is just distilled water it literally says it on there honestly i thought i thought that like having plants and being in college was going to be a little bit more difficult i'm not saying it's the easiest thing in the world but it's definitely i think the challenge really comes down to like youtube and my college work i feel like the only thing i really struggle with is like figuring out what to prioritize because there's like clearly i feel like um i should prioritize like my my college work and stuff like right now i have things to do for college but i'm like you know what i can do that when you know um i'm done with this oh god please don't drop but i think for me the struggle is like also focusing on youtube and by the way that's also why i've been like so like delayed on uploads trust me i'm not doing that on like purpose whatsoever i if anything i feel like terrible when i'm late on uploads because i know like how i just I'm the type of person to, that like hates being late. I just like I'm really really organized and I try to be like very very consistent Especially on YouTube. It took me a while to like actually Feel this sort of momentum to like keep being consistent and like I feel like recently I've actually been enjoying like a lot of my content and usually I feel like I kind of fizzle out and I'm just like I kind of need a break from YouTube, but more recently. I think it's definitely been the opposite like I really really feel invigorated with YouTube and I really want to like continue to post and just like make amazing content for you guys but the struggle with that is like I have like I have YouTube I have my university stuff I also have you know my plants to take care of I also have a cat I also have like you know there's all these responsibilities and it's like um the biggest challenge, I guess, just comes from, like, 
knowing when to prioritize what I guess like when to prioritize YouTube or when to prioritize my schoolwork and so a lot of the times that's why I am late on uploads is because it's just like I have due dates and you know some days I just really need to prioritize university over YouTube and that's just kind of where I'm at right now which I know it kind of sucks in December I will hopefully be a lot more consistent because I have break coming up and so I will get to film a whole bunch of fun content for you guys which I really really am happy about that um also this is my El Troco she is doing amazing you guys like look at this freaking root do you guys see that oh wait it's right there look at that root oh my god oh, I love this freaking El Troco um, I'm so happy that I finally cracked the code on this and I honestly let this get really really dry Which I can surprisingly take like I think this leaf is just now starting to yellow off which Is what it is But yeah, that's just been my life lately. Honestly, um How's your guys' life been? I know with the holidays it can get pretty hectic. Oh my god. Don't even Don't even get me started on the holidays <laughs> Oh my god I think holidays is the worst, but also the best time. At first, I'm not gonna lie, I was very skeptical on keeping these, but I feel like imagining this as like a big pot with like a really pretty design, I would love, I would love these. By the way, I'm talking about my string of turtles. I feel like it's not even in frame. <laughs> But, oh right, I haven't showed you guys this actually. So this is a seedling by green.hughes on Instagram. I ordered from them and it is a, hopefully you guys can see the name. It's a dock block F2 crossed with a red crystal, crossed with a Carla, crossed with a Pappy F2, which I feel like, I know it's kind of like a mix of a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm so excited to have this. It's my first seedling as well. And by the way, I have decided that for now, I am kind of taking a pause with Ethereums. I feel like at first I have like, I have Ethereums in kind of like all stages right now. Like I have my political forum, which is sort of at like, I wouldn't say a seedling stage, but definitely not like a mature stage. Um, and then I have my Crystallinum, which is, um, pretty mature but it's also in propagation and then I have my wavy no ID which is like doing amazing it's at like prime and theorem like stage I guess and then I have a seedling so I have kind of like four anthuriums that are all at kind of different stages that I would love to learn more about so I think that for now I am going to wait until I sort of understand you know how to propagate anthurium you know where my wavy no idea is gonna go from here you know and I'll actually show you guys it in a second but I just want to take a pause <laughs> a quick little pause from Ethereum because I feel like I want to make the effort to understand them a little bit more that's just where I'm at with Ethereum but you know times can change you know if I see an Ethereum that's you know worth it I'm gonna go for it probably but this thing has one little tiny little leaf and yeah i'm really excited to have this in my collection and grow it also this is so freaking creative like look at this little freaking container oh my god it's so cute yeah i'm really really excited for this i have thought about moving it out because i recently watched on plant parenthood's video with like collaboration with um amanda or bunny on instagram and she was talking about how she moves seedlings out as soon as they have a leaf i just I don't know if I'm like, I don't know if I have the total complete confidence to do that just because it is a seedling. It's my first seedling and yeah, I just, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I think I might wait until it has like two or three leaves, but I'm so excited to grow this from seedling. I have seen how quickly anthuriums can grow and it's just kind of insane to be honest. Like it's, it's crazy. Oh, you probably need water. I haven't given this water in so long. Ooh. This is my, oh my goodness, here we go. This is my Mikens that I potted up. Oh God, yeah you do. Yeah you do. At first I thought it wasn't rooting, but then I looked at the bottom and it literally has like, do you guys see that? That's a root right there. This is a root. And then I think I just saw one right there. That's a root. So like, I don't know, this thing seems pretty happy to me. 
by the way with these plants i still like completely saturate the substrate i'm not like treating them like if they're not growing i also fertilize these honestly i think these are even ready to pot up and whatever isn't ready to pot up i might just throw out because i have so many mannequins like you guys i'm overflowing with them i don't i don't even know like i just too much too freaking much also look at this freaking can you guys can i even show you guys that do you guys see that oh my goodness that's like perfect for propagating but i'm not I'm not gonna do that <laughs> i don't need to be propagating any more mannequins and now that i've sort of checked everything i literally just put everything back okay not that this, not that this is a tutorial or whatever but um i don't know i don't know why i'm telling y'all what i'm doing but i don't know i don't even know if you guys are gonna enjoy this video to be honest but we'll see we'll see oh yeah i also wanted to mention my experience with propagating in winter which for some plants like my anthurium um is there any plants i can think of i guess my gigas for a long time too was struggling i just would not recommend propagating in winter like if you have grow lights great if you have a heating mat great like you are perfectly set up to propagate but with me even with the grow lights i feel like i still kind of struggle with like more of the easier ones like i have my uh ripsalis my um like philodendron the heteracium and even like the epipremnum even the epipremnum i feel like you could get a you can oh my god can i speak jesus you can get away with um propagating those just because they are a little bit more easier as long as you're giving it light it should do good um natural light during this time i don't think would really work unless you had like south facing window and even in my area i just don't think a south facing window would do it because we like by four it's already dark it's already pitch black so yeah it's not it's not the best idea to propagate during these times i think last year i was propagating a lot and i had like the worst lighting possible for propagating and i was still freaking doing it so yeah definitely don't if if you can wait i'd say wait and i say that from experience if you haven't watched i'll pop in the thumbnail of this video um go watch that video because a lot of that video was literally just me messing with my plants when they really when i really just shouldn't have um like after that video i think i messed with my splendid my gigas and like they're both doing okay now but after like i'm you know messed with the roots or whatever um they were definitely not happy for a very long time so take my advice and leave your plants alone <laughs> leave them the heck alone <laughs> if if you have like a sort of routine down you know what you're doing feel free like i'm not don't listen to me like don't don't feel the need to listen to my advice if you know what you're doing and if you feel a little bit iffy about a propagation i feel like that's when you really need to not do like what you're doing i feel like for me that's what happened with my micans is i felt really really like not sure about whether i wanted to repot it and whether it was going to do okay and just like i had a lot of doubts when it came to my micans and so i i i feel like that sort of contributed to my like fail with the micans repot just because like i already wasn't feeling like i should like as i was doing it i was already feeling like i shouldn't do it and then I still continue to do it and then it flopped right after that also happened with my gigas um I felt like I just shouldn't have touched that plant like as I was doing it I was like I should really leave this alone and you know me being stubborn I just kept going um yeah so if you are like not feeling comfortable during your repots especially during the winter just just don't do it just don't do it um but if push comes to shove like I feel like the, the negative thing with that is like if you're repotting and then the plant doesn't do well after repot then you're forced into propagation and propagation during winter is just like like I was just saying it's it's pretty like 50 50 I feel like um if you have the conditions like in my um Ikea like greenhouse close situation I feel like that does pretty well with a lot of my propagations but 
I feel like I have, you know, I kind of have to put in the money to make it like thrive, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, anyways, moving on. Okay, so now we're on like my, I don't even know what I call these. I guess just my wall shelf, my plant shelves. I don't know. I don't know what we call these, but I usually don't check these just because these kind of, I've noticed, take a little bit longer to like use up their water i guess but um like this i know i've watered that's watered I'm pretty sure this is watered um i have severely been underwatering this you guys probably can't see it but this is my solanum lianum yeah from russo plant care and i have been underwatering this thing like crazy the one thing that i think i am gonna do with this is chop off this inflow um i've repotted this twice now even with the new leaf and the inflow so i think it's just not a good idea to keep the inflow on there um so we are gonna chop it off it is the second inflow which i could technically like uh collect the pollen from this one but i'd just rather not i'd rather put the plant's health above it so i'm just gonna chop it off and there we go the last time i cut one of these off it was actually already producing the stigmatic fluid I kind of had a little bit of regrets, but at the same time, I was like, no, like, I, I just, I don't think that right now is really the time to be doing things like this, so I'm, I'm completely okay with needing to cut that off, because this leaf has also been here for, like, I want to say when I got my hair cut, it was, like, just now coming out, and now it's, like, barely starting to sort of unfurl, um, and I'd rather, like, see a significant size up over like collecting pollen like i don't know it just doesn't really seem that um oh my god i'd rather prioritize the leaf over the inflow is what i'm trying to say and up here we have my florida beauty which is watered as well yeah see these just don't tend to deplete their water as much i don't know what it is um look at this beautiful leaf oh my god i love me some florida beauty they're just, just so magical i do really hope that this new leaf because it does have a new leaf on the way it's up here as you guys can see um i hope that the new leaf has a lot more green like i'd love to see it even like this which i know this is kind of you guys can't even see it i'd love to see it like this like that is like the ultimate variegated plant to me or even this to be honest even oh god this leaf right here that i feel like is also some really good variegation but i feel like this plant is starting to lean more towards like the not so healthy variegation so i don't know i just hope there's a lot more green in this can't really see much um it's still in its little catafil thing so we'll just leave that one alone i don't think it needs water also, my solanum, you guys can't really see it. Let me... This is starting to trail downward. Like, before, it would, like, curve up like this. That's why it has such a weird shape, because it was hitting my mirror and growing upwards. But now, you guys can see, it's just kind of, like... Even this, like, shorter strand up here, it's also doing the same thing. And it's just, like, oh my god. I don't know. I feel like it's actually starting to get some size on it. I also want to propagate this one as well. But... Um... I want to propagate another like cutting for me and then I also want to propagate oh my god I didn't even see that oh my god um but I also want to propagate it for like family and friends and stuff but again I just this plant is one of those it's a terrarium plant so it's very very dramatic even when you cut it up um like the leaves will be flopped over until it grows roots so this is one that I do also recommend like putting into like a cloche or something um maybe not like a full like humid cloche but like definitely you you want to have some sort of humidity around them um i probably wouldn't recommend doing like how i have my gigas like in almost like completely 100 percent humidity um just because it is a terrarium plant so transitioning it out of that might be a little bit more a little bit more difficult so i think this one i'm definitely gonna wait till the summer to like start propagating it but yeah and I'm not going to show you guys my desk because my desk is horrid right now. Um, I just have like a lot of stuff on it. But I usually don't really water these plants. 
either. I think maybe this one needs water. Doesn't like need need water, but could use water soon. This is my Calathea Warshawixii. It's also giving me a new leaf. Oh my god, I, I feel so in love with this plant, but yeah, I'm not gonna water that because it is by my window and it doesn't really need water right now. So yeah, everything by my window, I just kind of leave it until I notice it because I'm always at my desk, whether that's like gaming or doing homework or eating or something. Um, I will like always tend to notice these first. So whenever these need water, I'm like right on it. Okay, I, it is a little bit harder to get the angle right over here, so I hope that this is good enough. I will also just give a little bit of a precursor to this. I've been dealing with aphids in here. I've been dealing with aphids on my Drosera as well. I don't know what it is about this time. Let me know if you know how to get rid of aphids because honestly, they're the most annoying thing that I could ever have dealt with. Like, I would take spider mites over aphids because like aphids, I feel like I've done everything to get rid of. I've used bleach, not on the plants, by the way, not on the plants, but on the like cabinet, on the like, not the cabinet, the glass. <laughs> I've used bleach on the glass of this. I've used bleach on all of the cups and they still keep coming back. I don't know what the heck to do with this. I've rinsed off my maiden hair fern plenty of times. I'm pretty sure that's where they're coming from. And like they're getting on my philodendron, on like my alocasia, my begonia, like literally everything in here. They are just like having a feast. Like I don't know what it is, but I despise aphids. Like I truly, they are just so annoying and disgusting and I just don't like them. But yeah, this I could probably switch the water out. I don't think I've switched the water out in this one for a while. Um, yeah, see there's one right there. This begonia also just needs some like TLC, I think. So where are my scissors? Also, Lila hasn't made her cameo yet because she's literally sitting on the bed asleep or not even asleep. She's just laying there. But I'm just going to chop off. Hold on. Let me show you what I'm dealing with. This is how big this... Um, what is this called? This cutting is of the begonia. I believe someone said that this is the Benigio pink. I haven't looked into that. I actually should look into that before I even say anything. But I'm going to chop off these two lower leaves. I should actually pot this up soon. But I think I might chop this into two. Because look at how like long this is now. But the only issue is that this down here has roots coming out of like... Actually, I could just chop it right here. Should I? You know what? I just chopped that. And I kind of want to chop this even shorter. But for now, I think that this is okay. And another thing with this begonia is I've also been dealing with um, powdery mildew. Non-stop. And I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll move it to my other thing. Maybe I'll do that today, actually. But yeah, I just... This plant cannot catch a break. We've officially gone through all of the water. I have the rest of it in here. So whatever gets watered with this is what gets fertilized. I don't really, if it doesn't get fertilized, then that is what it is. I guess this is like an updates slash uh, plant care. This also needs water. This ficus chivariana is finally, it's finally giving me a new leaf. Which I'm so excited about. Hopefully the aphids don't freaking attack that one. But they're aphids, so I'm not going to put it past them. Also, this thing roots up like crazy. And this is one of my definitely thirstier plants because of, like, I'm watering this at least once a week, even now. But you guys can kind of see all of those roots. That's a root right there. Those are roots that's a root like you guys can just see how freaking crazy this is also i love the little pot in this one oh my goodness it's so cute and adorable fry deck still rotting hasn't been doing that well as always and there's an aphid on it you guys seriously what can i do for these aphids oh i also wanted to mention oh my god there's an aphid right there this whole video is just going to be me talking about aphids and how much I hate them, but I really do. There's another one. 
Also, I figured out what this is on the begonia, or what, <laughs> on the alocasia. I remember a while ago I was telling you guys that this has like two weird points coming out. They're both leaves, which is really weird. I'm not sure if this plant like accidentally, like maybe the plant thought that the caterpillar wasn't really functioning anymore or something. I don't know what. And then it made, it might've triggered like the growth point within the leaf. I literally have no idea, but there's two leaves popping out on this and it is what it is. Also, I'm pretty sure this is from the aphids. If you guys can see that damage. Um, that like yellow marking is from the aphids. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm sorry, I keep bringing the aphids up, but they're honestly like really annoying. Also recently I've been trying not to like bring in other plants. I feel like it's not necessarily a plant ban because I feel like I've, again, I've, I'm pretty sure I've talked about plant bans before. I don't really try to like put myself on like a strict plant ban. There's just like moments where I know I shouldn't be buying plants, so I decide not to buy plants. Like right now, I think it's definitely one of those moments because I am like, I wouldn't say I'm low on space, but I could use, I'd prefer to just like really indulge myself in what's in my collection already rather than like continuously bring in plants and bring in plants and bring in plants that I are just gonna, at the end of the day, stress me out and like I'm not really gonna have the time to like take care of them, I guess. So I've been trying to like really hone in on what's in my collection right now and focus less on like what's new and what's trendy and like not that i've ever focused on what's trendy i feel like i've always kind of like really tried to just like fo like follow what i enjoy and what i find myself really liking in my collection like right now i will say my purple passion is like at the top of my list to get rid of i think um but a part of me still really likes that plant and really really loves the like look of that plant let me show you it actually but like i just i feel like i just don't really have anywhere to go with this plant like it's really really big okay like it's freaking massive and i feel like i just kind of don't really know where to go from here like it's just going to continue to grow up also the top like foliage is starting to get really really sprawly and like small like this is what i was getting where is it i think this is one of the leaves that i was getting during the summer or somewhat during the summer it was like when it was starting to cool down um and even this leaf is like really really big but i feel like after those leaves it's kind of just like the leaves are just getting smaller and smaller and it's like i feel like that is going to be the death not necessarily the death but this is that's going to be what leads me to like get rid of this plant um i do really like this plant the cool plant i really do like it but and i'm I will say that this plant kind of made me realize that I am somewhat good at taking care of plants. Like, I'm not terrible. I feel like I always sort of put a little bit of pressure on myself to um, be good at taking care of my plants. Um, I obviously have like my, oops, I, I obviously have like my negatives, like begonias are definitely not my strong suit. Hoyas are definitely not my strong suit. Philodendron, I wouldn't say are my strong suit. There's just a lot that I still need to work on but this has still sort of reminded me that I am like capable of doing all this like obviously I'm capable but like actually seeing the growth of this plant and seeing how much it's like doubled tripled I think this is like quadrupled in size you guys when I got it it was so 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 small and now it's just like this monstrous tower of like purple i guess i just don't really know where to go from here with this plant is what i'm trying to say like my options are chop it which i don't think i want to chop it get rid of it i don't completely want to get rid of it or just like i don't know let me know if you guys have any recommendations of what i should do with this because i feel like even these as like trailing plants look kind of weird like you can tell they're not really supposed to be trailing they at least this one mine definitely does not want to trail it's like it does not want to trail maybe if i like trained it to but even then like i feel like the the like leaf growth pattern just isn't really doesn't give me trailer like trailing vibes so i don't know I don't know what to do with this plant. If you know what I should do, let me know. <sighs> this is another plant that I have no idea what I'm doing with. Like, I, I don't know what the heck I'm doing whatsoever. Um, like, do I water this? Do I not water it? I don't know. Maybe we'll just 
put a little bit in there. If you guys have any tips for how to get this thing to come back out of dormancy, let me know. I don't mind waiting till the summer, but I'd just rather not wait till the summer. Like this freaking monstrosity. Actually, let me check the roots on it. This thing has never really had... <gasps> oh my god, it's doing amazing. Uh, thank you. Thank you for freaking like getting your stuff together because for a while there I was actually thinking about giving up on this plant and like not trying to grow it big but I just love the way that this plant lays like I don't know if that makes sense like I it's kind of dark actually maybe you guys won't be able to see it hold on now can you guys see it a little bit better hopefully you can <laughs> I don't know I feel like this isn't really helping but um I just love the way that it's like you can see the size up like these are all small and it's just like slowly getting like bigger and bigger and bigger like this was the biggest leaf and now like this monstrosity has come out it's not like the biggest thing in the world but I'm happy that we're getting somewhere which is all that really matters and this doesn't need water either I've been so bad at keeping this like the nodes on here um like attached to the moss before i used to be like so diligent about it but now i'm just kind of like not really paying that much attention i feel like this one i kind of can get away with it just because of how like or not i can get away with it but it like escapes me because of how fast this thing grows i just don't have the patience or like the time to really keep up with it i guess when i water i should just check the nodes a little bit more but yeah, especially this thing is almost at the top of the moss pole as well. Which I don't even know what we're going to do. I'm kind of scared to repot this. Okay, and of course my freaking aphid spawner. You know what? I think I'm going to chop this back and just leave like one little branch or one little frond out. Probably, it's probably going to be these two. Well, I'm just going to get to chopping. If you don't like people cutting plants for no reason, turn your eyes. Well, this isn't for no reason. This is because of freaking aphids, but turn your eyes. Oh, I just saw one jump. Oh my God. That makes my skin crawl. Ew, 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 ew. Oh my God. I've never done this to this extent either, by the way. Like I've chopped off like all of the browning and stuff, but I've never like just hacked this thing down. Okay, this is what we're left with. <laughs> um, I know it's not the most, like, pleasing thing to the eye, but it's what I gotta do for my freaking peace of mind and for everything. And I think I'm gonna take all of these to the shower and get them rinsed, get them treated. Um, I don't really have anything to treat with, to be honest. Um, maybe they'll just mix up some, like, soap or something or... Yeah, I think soap will be the way to go. And then I'm also, I think I'm gonna wash every single one of these with that as well. Like I'm just gonna completely rinse out everything because I'm just, I'm just done. I don't wanna see another aphid ever in my life. If this is what I gotta do, this is what I gotta do. And yeah, so I don't think I'm gonna film that just because I don't want it to be too crazy long. Or maybe I will film it and then I'll just time lapse through it. But we'll see. I don't know.
So I wasn't going to record this and I was kind of, I'm kind of still contemplating not even recording this. I found where the aphids are coming from and it's not from the leaves. It's actually from in here. So either like my options are either right now to get rid of this or repot it and separate some of these like rhizomes, I think they're called. I want to tell you, I like don't even want to touch this with like a 10 foot pole. Oh my God. I'm like so freaking disgusted right now, but I'm just gonna repot this as fast as I can. Not necessarily to challenge anything or anything like that, but I, I just, I don't wanna deal with aphids anymore. And I thought that it was, you know, on the leaves, on the surface or whatever, but, and I'm really gonna be kind of aggressive with this, honestly, because I'm just, I'm tired of dealing with aphids. I might just separate out like one or two of these and just regrow it from that if I'm being honest. Um, I don't mind doing that knowing how fast this thing grows. I honestly would not mind that at all actually and it would definitely help me like space wise. Uh, by the way, I'm doing this on the end of my bed. So I'm gonna try and be as clean as possible. <laughs> um, yeah, after all of that treating, it's just like to still find freaking aphids of course like of course that happens to me like i said before i really don't care about these roots right now um i guess i could just try and like pull these apart more than anything see because now i've pulled this out and it has no roots so maybe i should try and be a little bit more careful oh my god i can see them I think I might also have white fly. I don't know if it's white fly or aphids because I also see some like white little bugs on there. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a cup with alcohol. Shoot, I don't have alcohol. I'm gonna get a cup with hydrogen peroxide and some water going because I just am super, super disgusted and I'd rather just like not deal with this okay i got my cup of water <laughs> and i have my hydrogen peroxide here i don't even know if you guys can see any of this and if you can't then i'm just gonna scrap this footage but honestly oh my God, why why after everything <laughs> i just hope that this like actually gets rid of them i'm actually if I get some that have like pretty good roots and stuff, I'm actually pretty excited to be able to like grow these back from nothing. This plant I feel like has always kind of stressed me out in that sense. Um, like I have the perfect little pot for this. Like I can just stick it in here and it'll look so freaking cute when it grows in. Like I don't mind any of this. God, if I would have known that, I literally wouldn't have chopped all of those leaves, but it's okay gonna be in a small pot i was planning on you know continuing this till we got to like the end of like all of my plants but i think usually i don't have a lot to like water in this like um i forget what they're called but my little mini greenhouse to my left here usually i don't end up watering a lot anyways so i think i might just do that off camera and then i might repot my flooded and splendid off camera as well I, I am sad to see it like where it is at right now like literally every single roots every single like root that it's grown in the last couple months is all in here and like all of that is just kind of go to the trash pretty much which sucks but um it's a maiden hair fern it's resilient um and you know I'm gonna be giving it enough light and maybe even um maybe even setting up a little greenhouse for it so i'm not like too torn over it don't get me wrong i am like still torn over it but it's just like they're like it is what it is and i'm just gonna move on with it and do what i can um which in the long run it's also gonna be a little bit better because you guys those aphids were irritating me so much every like it never really occurred to me that it was gonna be in the like rhizomes or whatever so that's just kind of where I'm at with that. But anyways, okay class, we're done. 
this is what i have for my pot which is really shallow but it's honestly what fits in here so we're just gonna go with that i could cut it a little bit lower but i also don't want it to be like too crazy steep steep shallow <laughs> what okay <sighs> let's pull these out see what we're working with you guys can hear the bubbling i'm sure again not a lot of roots on this like really truly not a lot of roots okay honestly that took it out of me i did get rid of a lot of rhizomes just because i feel like if this thing does end up getting aphids again or whitefly or whatever that was i don't want to have to deal with like treating all of those rhizomes so i kind of narrowed it down to like the select few that you know had the most growth or had the most roots um, so I do have quite a bit here. So this is all I'm left with. These three little, f um, these three little fronds. Obviously there's more rhizomes than there is fronds, but, and then this little grouping of rhizomes and they're just gonna go straight into here. Um, I think I am gonna do it just a bit more chunky because I do want this thing to dry out. The, I don't want them to rot is what I was trying to say. I also don't want to put too much aeration in there because it is a made in here fern. I hope that it is as resilient as I've experienced it. Um, I've never done this with a made in here fern, so this is like completely new to me. Okay, that is all for this day of plant care. Um, I was gonna, you know, take you through everything, but honestly, I'm really exhausted. This whole aphid situation was completely unplanned, um, and I did not expect to really go that into depth but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this and let me know if you guys enjoy these types of videos i definitely do want to do another one where i completely take you through like every single thing that i do because i feel like there's just a lot that kind of happens behind the scenes like when i'm caring for my plants hope you guys got some of your plant chores done as well but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this and thank you so so much for watching